Okay. This is a demonstration of the GMB test, or what we often call the bulk specific gravity or bulk density. This test is run on all gyratory specimens and is also run on all field cores that are drilled from the pavement. The test is exactly the same regardless of whether it's a gyratory specimen or a field core. The equipment that we use here is simply a scale with a suspension system underneath so that we're able to weigh a specimen in a basket that's underwater. This is how the test is run. It's very simple. We weigh it in air, we weigh it underwater, pat it dry, weigh it back in air and get three weights. There isn't much that can go wrong with this test. It's fairly simple. First of all, it has to be at 77 degrees plus or minus five degrees, just like the GMM test. Except in this test, we don't do any temperature compensation as long as it is within that 72 to 82 degree range. As far as the apparatus goes, there's only a couple things that can go wrong here. One is, obviously, there's a hole in the table that the scale is sitting on. You have to make sure that the suspension system does not rub on the hole in the table. There's a basket down here in the water. We have to make sure that that basket does not touch the bottom or rub on the sides of the water container. All right, so I'm just going to demonstrate using a gyratory specimen here. When you have a gyratory specimen, the first thing we do is what's called crumbing. You simply brush off any, any loose material. It's not unusual for a few uh, crumbs, particles to be stuck to it. Brush those off. Be sure the scale is zeroed and get your initial weight. In the equation, this is W1. In this case, 4,736.7. Now we're going to weigh underwater. And you will notice that this basket that I used to suspend it underwater is at an angle. The reason for that is you do not want to trap any air bubbles under the sample. That would change the specific gravity. So if, if you do have a flat basket that you're using for this, you would put that into the water at an angle. Just be sure to do, do not trap any air bubbles under the sample. Now this may take a while. Uh, in this case, it's kind of spinning and moving a little bit. You see the scale is saying it's stable, but the IM says that it can't change more than a tenth of a gram in 10 seconds. As long as it stabilizes that well, and this one appears to have stable. Sometimes this will take 30 seconds to stabilize if the water is sloshing around in the container. Okay, so W2 appears to be 2,738, even. Now we take the sample out of the water. And we pat it dry. Don't rub it because you might knock a corner off or knock some pieces off of it. Simply carefully pat it dry. What some people like to do is just lay a towel on the table and roll it back and forth and then pat the ends. That's fine. You can use a chamois for this purpose. It does help if the towel or whatever you're using is slightly damp to start with. Breaks the surface tension. Make sure the scale is zeroed again, and we get what we call the SSD weight, saturated surface dry weight. This weight should always be higher than the initial weight. We get 4738.3 for W3. So that is all the information we need for the GMB test.